Jason is back. Your psychokinesis and these delusions are... No, you're not listening to me! Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. Opening Friday, May 13th, the deadliest day of the year. Welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Sequel. This is the movie podcast. We're talking sequels, and we do it in two parts. The first, an interview with an actor, someone involved that made the film worth watching. And the second, a discussion of the sequel, what they got right, what they got wrong, and how it could have been better. Really hope you enjoyed last week's interview with actress and author Stacey Greason. She was the first kill in the sequel that we're going to be covering. Friday the 13th, our favorite franchise to cover. And it's a new blood part seven. She was the first death. She likened it to Kevin Bacon being the first death in Friday the 13th. She had that. She wanted that connection, but it kind of worked out for her. Days of our lives. She's on 400 plus episodes. She has a book out called all the girls in town. Great chat. If you haven't listened to that, wait until after this review and then go check it out. But uh, yeah, I'm always excited to talk Friday the 13th and uh, it's my favorite franchise. And I love talking it with my, uh, Coast, so I have to introduce you to my partner in the sequel watching journey, Jamie Riccardi. Jamie, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, Doug. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. I was thinking about it. There's a lot of these movies, and we were just talking about the next sequel that we're going to be covering, how there's like at least 10 of them. Like, there's 12 of these. How many, off the top of your head, how many have we covered? Number wise, five. Seven. We, we've covered seven? Yeah. Well, Isn't that crazy? Four, it is crazy. five, it, four, five, seven this week. Okay. Eight, nine. Did we do Jason X? Jason X. X. Okay. And Freddy vs. Jason. Well, I have to tell you, I think this might be the worst one. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, well, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell might be my, my the worst one, I think. But this is up there. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I, unfortunately, I had watched this one twice in the last, you know, few months because by accident I watched the wrong one uh, a while ago. So I have as, that clip, so I have to you? put okay. that out there. So as I'm watching this, I'm like, this movie looks familiar. And then I realized I sat through it once before, and, and now it's the second time I sat through it. Um, I'll tell you why. Um, one, I think, first of all, I think the acting in this movie was horrendous all around. There weren't any, and I mean any, there weren't any likable characters at all. Like, I, I mean, you, I wasn't cheering for anybody. I think there was a lot of overact, overacting. And I just think it's, I feel like it was a forced Jason movie. Like, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know. I, I just think it just, it just wasn't good. It wasn't good. I you mean, didn't like Bad News Cruise? You don't think he was a good guy? Oh, I hated everybody. And He you might know, be the worst adult that, like, we've seen a lot of adults in these movies, like, in all horror movies, like manipulate to get something, what he was trying to do, which to me, he seems like, uh, I don't know, a guy that has like a little office in like a doctor building, little office, and he has his opportunity to like come upon this discovery of like telekinetic powers. And he's like trying to harness it by sort of ruining this girl's life. Well, I mean, we have a lot to talk about Kaiser. I mean, a lot to talk about him, you know, just his tactics and everything else. The mom is no angel either. So, you know, and we'll get into that. I mean, she's definitely a, a, a very poor parent. Um, I mean, if there's any likable character, I guess Tina, you feel bad for her. Um, I like Nick. I think Nick was a pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, okay, let's be honest. He knew Tina for what? A day? Two days? After everything that she was doing and what was going on, how long would you stay? I mean, he really huh, didn't. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, so like he didn't really know her, and he's acting like this is his girlfriend for the last five years. You know, like so. You know, we we got to really dig in, but yeah, I just I don't know this movie. The only, the, I'll tell you right now, the one thing I didn't like, and it's to me, it's one of the most iconic kills that he has is a sleeping bag kill. Right, that's yes. like you know swinging at the tree. That's a you know great, but I mean, I don't know. Well. We'll, we'll talk about it. I just, I just feel like it was just, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it was outside of Kaiser. It was just a very silly plot all around. No, it definitely was. I, I love this. Again, I don't watch Friday the 13th for, oh, man, I really want that good storyline, which I know some of them do. Like, four has a great story. Yeah. Six is silly that a lightning bolt brings them back. And, like, most of them are kind of silly. But the one thing I do love about this one was you had a special effects guy directing it, John Beekler. He got screwed by the ratings. Like, 
this is one movie if they had an unrated version and you could watch like all the kills dude you got to watch behind the scenes you have to watch it any listeners it's on youtube they don't have a lot of it because they paramount like got rid of the footage but god some of the kills that we only saw like little snippets of were so brutal and great special effects so he turned this movie into a stunt movie Dude, you see Jason doing things in this movie well, that you never could see, and Kane and, crushes okay. it. So, so here's the thing. So, and I think that's part of the problem. Like to me, the minute he takes that mask off, it uh. ruins it, it ruins Jason for me because now it's like it's a monster. It's not Jason. Like you know, like because they, they really made him look like a monster, and yeah. it, it it's almost like there was a monster hiding behind the mask, not Jason. And I think that to me, yes, everybody wants to see what he looks like, but then. It, to me, I think it backfires. I think he he just looks like a monster, you know. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of questionable things that happen that don't make sense at, at all, at all. And you know, like I mean, the, the father and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's so much that we can <laughs> undercover. And again, Jason doing things that now you know what he looks like. There's no way he should be doing half the things he's doing. He's a monster. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> the fact that. Uh... But one thing that was cool, uh, Beekler watched all the movies and all the hits to Jason. And he made sure the body, like the makeup, had all of them. And I love the exposed uh, back. But one thing yes. we have to talk about right off the jump is, like, we let's talk about the opening scene and then talk about what happens. Like, what, what happens? Like, you mean the 10 so minute of basically just talking about the previous movie? I mean, literally. Oh, well, that's what's great about these. The beginnings are always so cool. Whoever does that voice, I don't know who that is, but I really think that's the same guy that uh, he definitely does it in the other movies. But he does the intro in eight, like the the story. Uh, yeah. yeah, but but how how long was this movie? Did this movie come out before? I mean, after the the last previous movie. Oh, uh, I mean, I'm assuming not that long. Okay, yeah, you really like need a... so people that are watching that are are, are Friday thirteenth. You know, fans are they? Do they really need a recap that's ten minutes long about the previous movie? You know, um, and and they literally, I mean, they went like they went through the whole story. It wasn't like a quick, like it was like it, yes, it was cool to reminisce, but it, I, I just saw the movie a year ago. I need to recap. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. I think it was filler. Did, li- did Liv's have have a thing like that? I, I don't think so. Liv's, I don't. I feel like Liv's got right to it. I feel like yeah. the beginning of that because of what happened in five. I think Liv's jumped right into it. But uh, all right. So why don't we follow suit? Let's jump right into it. Okay. And uh, so yeah, so we get Jennifer Banco, who hopefully one day we get her on the podcast. But we remember her as the creepy girl from Tex Chainsaw Massacre Three. That is uh, in Vigo Mortensen's like sister or daughter. I, that family's like so incest but dude the dad do drunk people i know i don't think we have any alcoholic dads listening but if you are or if you had one i'm sorry but can you tell us did they ever say lines like hey baby you want to party <laughs> yeah you know it's definitely a trope you see in a lot of these movies especially yeah. horror movies um but i you know at first the girl looked like the girl from poltergeist i the little she girl has her look yeah I, and I really thought it was her. And then I forgot that, unfortunately, she died. So it couldn't have yeah. been her. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, just they really make the dads, like the alcoholic dads, so creepy <laughs> in all these movies. <laughs> hey, have a drink. Join the party. <laughs> and then she runs. She runs away. One thing I have to say is the title card, one line I did like was the voiceover – it was kind of creepy because it's so true, and that's why I think hopefully the 13th, 13th movie that they do, which I hope is October 13th of 2023, that's the next one after January, would be to bring back all the people that survived. Because one of the lines that the guy says is, few have seen him and lived. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, I want that to happen so bad. But back to it. She runs away. They live on Crystal Lake, of course. And they, she runs out to the boat. She takes about pretty quick, and that dog, uh, right? Uh, Wasn't it really high up? Yeah, it, it was. But however, it was close to the sh- like the the land. So like, what happens? He drowns. How deep is that water? Right there, <laughs> right? I mean, that's first of all. But okay, so before we even get there, so they live on Crystal Lake, which is a camp. So why are they living on Crystal Lake? Right? I mean, isn't that a campsite? Like where? Uh, it's the, it's well, the only house there. 
<laughs> okay. Well, there's a house next door. Or, okay. Were the were the right. other high school? Well, kids it's like a guest. It's, kids? That's like a guest house almost. It's like the, sort okay, of, okay. yeah. Okay, but they're living at Cri- uh, Crystal Lake. This Jason's been around now for what six movies at this point? Yep. So uh, five. Okay, five movies. Tons of murder that's been happening. She's living on Crystal Lake, yet as she's older, she's never heard of Jason Voorhees. Well, so that's the next point. Okay. So. Okay. I'm not saying that people should forget when there's a time jump, but after she kills her dad by shaking her head and doing like a, you know, Elizabeth from. uh, Okay. So how did the father die? Because he basically just like the way that the doc fell, it just collapsed. Like yeah. it, it was, and like I said, it mean, like the dock wasn't a long dock, so it was close to the shore. I can't imagine it being that deep there. And even if it was, you're telling me the guy drowned. His house is on the water. Why would you buy a house on the water if you can't swim? Well, I'm sure he could swim. Maybe it was so wasted. Come on, babe. And then he fell, hit his head, and boom. Yeah. Cost Gonzo. All right. All right. <laughs> and the one that, ah! And then everybody's screaming, and then we cut to uh, her in the car with her mom. Yeah. But, dude, the thing that's crazy about the whole thing is the time jump. So they never – well, we know, like, there's certain things we know in these movies, like when Jason was born. I don't know if we ever know that it's 1980 in that first one. But – so she's, like, 11 or 12. I think that's what they sort of say. And then she's, I think they say, like, this is seven years ago or eight years ago. So she's 18, 19. So this is, like, the 90s. Right. Essentially. So that's, like, that huge of a time jump. I'm not saying they could make people forget about Jason, but no, no. no one knows about him. That's what I mean. And, and, and okay, forget about, forget, you're telling me, and they're partying on, on, on Crystal Lake, which, again, I'm not, I, I, I still don't understand why it's not closed down. I mean, you've had, be. you've had murder, five Five years of multiple murders on this one site. Why would you leave it open? Oh, I got the answer. You know who the mayor is? Mayor Vaughn. From, uh, he retired from Anthony. From Jaws? Oh. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, like, why would that stay open? <laughs> why would people li- – why would you want to live there? I mean, let alone uh, – clearly, they don't know what's going on in the first place, which, again, doesn't make sense, you know, that you no one has ever heard of Jason who's murdered five years People, yeah, and at least would you say at least 20 people? So, okay, a lot more than that. Okay, a lot more than that. No, at least 10 15 a movie. Okay, so he's killed like 75 people. So, you're oh, I don't know. You're talking about the ultimate serial killer, and no one's heard of him. I don't think so. Yeah, (laughs) that's ridiculous. So, oh, we actually we have to be right. It's two, three, four. He's not in five. Oh, okay. Six. So this okay. is only his fifth. But movie. there was murder. Uh, at, it's still a Crystal Lake at five, right? <laughs> so that's <laughs> true, yeah. so, that's mean, even scarier. You know, I think. Now, whoa, whoa, it wasn't even Jason that killed. It just some rando that was an ambulance driver started killing. Holy shit, honey, we're moving. I mean, yeah. Clearly, there's a lot of bad luck in this. I don't want to. I don't even want to say town. It's it's an area. It's like they yeah. all die in the same area. Why would you live there? And why are they allowed to live there? Like, I it just, yeah. And, it's like it's the only lake left in the world. Okay, okay. So they're living there. However, they don't fix the dock in 15 years. So they just leave that dock that, that fell in the water. It just still, it's still broken into the water. And that must be a family home because uh, just a single parent, I don't know if she can afford that, and playing for living in the city. And then they just never be, they've never been back there. Okay, That's that, the way they made it sound. Okay. So that, I was going to say that too. So, okay. So she's now 18, even though she looks like she, everybody looks like they're in the mid to high 20s in this movie. Yeah. But, okay. So she's 18. So you're telling me the mom has not been there since she was, a, since the father died? I, no. I mean, it looks like it's been living, like she's been living there all this time. It's not dusty. It's not dusty. The electricity's still on. I mean, yes. you know, there's food there. I mean, like, so she maybe she is living there. But then that makes it even worse that she still doesn't know that. But, I mean, she's an adult. She doesn't know about the murders that, that that have been there. Yeah, the only time it really happens. Well, Dr. Kaiser, Dr. Kaiser, Dr. Cruz knows because he has that in the newspaper. But in that drawer, that's what makes no sense. In the drawer that she found the newspaper article was her dad's gun. Okay. From all those years before. So... Did did uh, Cruz put the articles on top of the gun, and then just like 
like did, whose articles were they? Were they uh, the yeah. dad's articles? Yeah, I know. It's well, again, there's there's a lot in this house because I mean, even the weapon later on that goes missing. First of all, wh- I don't even know what that wet thing was. I thought it was like a piece of like metal that was like a, a shelving. Like I, it was like what, was that a weapon? Like oh, like, all those things that we have. The me- there was a tent. There were tent spikes. That's what it was. That's a tent spike. Yeah, that's how uh, our, how our friend uh, Stacy Greason died. I know, I know, I know how she died, but like, how do you know the tent spike? The the one, the thing that was in the wall that, that in the in the and that was missing. Yeah, yeah, that's the tent spike. Yeah, because because you know? she's supposed to be setting up the tent when, uh, for some reason, uh, Billy Butler uh, goes to pee really far well, away. Yeah, well, it wasn't well, like he's dumping. Yeah, well, but but, but that's a that, there's no way that's a tent. That, look at the size that's, of that thing. That's you, an old back in the day tent spike. I don't know about that. Yeah, That's, that was and that was a mo- that weapon was used multiple times in this movie, and and there was more than one. All right, all right, all right. I... We need four ten spikes. <laughs> I know, but I mean, that thing was massive. I mean, I don't think that was a ten spike. That, that doesn't make sense. Why would you have you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to get that in the ground? It's too big. Sharp. Oh, forget it. Just knock it in. All right, all <laughs> right. Whatever. Tina's mom. Tina's mom reminded me of like every gym teacher in the eighties oh. and nineties. Can we bring that hair hairstyle back? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, she, you know what? She was awful. Um, like I said, every you know what? I think it's a trope in every horror movie that the parents, or I, I shouldn't even say parents, adults in general, yeah, are awful people, awful. Because like she had no idea that her daughter was in a psychiatric for really no reason. And, she and was her daughter manipulating her. Her daughter was being being tortured. Like, I mean, yeah. she was miserable. She thinks, that, I mean, the way Kaiser talks to her, like, is, is unbelievable. Like, I, I wonder if he really has a license. Because he looks like he doesn't, he doesn't have any bedside manner whatsoever. Oh, with this no, 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 He's no. not sensitive to anything. And it's, and he, and his plan is to live with them? Yeah. Like, <laughs> which I, I was questioning, like, why is he living there with them? <laughs> <laughs> One, yeah, no, so ridiculous. But uh, yeah, so then we meet the group of unsuspecting teens when they pull up, and uh, I would say the one that I think is the best out of all of them, play her role wise, Melissa. Which she one's played that? The perfect bitch with the pearls, the blonde. Oh, oh, yeah, but very unlikable though. I mean, yeah, she played. No, I know that's what if, I mean. But yeah, she nailed I, that role. Yeah, they they do. I mean, you know, you get the stoners. I mean, it's like again the same type. It's funny how. Every movie has the group of every personality, and, and always like you, there's never just like all the same like all the jocks. It's always you have one of each. It's like a game of Clue. The, there's always one that. of each and every. Yeah, I mean that's it is funny to see how each movie how they portray the same exact characters but in different ways. Um, but how about the fact that when she drops her suitcase, it was basically all underwear. I know. <laughs> I how see, long were they going I, away for? <laughs> but. Is she not wearing like it, it was? I I I was I I watched this movie twice and I it was funny. I went back and looked at my notes the first time. I was comparing them to this time and I basically have the same notes nice. each time. But I wrote that down twice for the first time. It's like, does she only pack underwear and doesn't eat any other clothes? <laughs> well, what did he? What did he take? That was like a nighty, right? What well, he pressed. no, it was, it, it was underwear. He picked up underwear. No, he didn't press. Yes, his he underwear. did. No, yes, when he, he brought that over, he said I washed it. It was like on a hanger. I think it was underwear. That's a big pair of underwear. <laughs> she she wears she wears uh what's it called uh, bloomers bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> Parachute. Well, this, this was the was eighties. What was this? This is eighties. Yeah. Okay. Of right. course, it follows the rules. Okay. So well, okay. They forced the rule in this movie. So ridiculous when it happens. Yeah. It it, it was like an oopsie. <laughs> just to show, just to break, just to make sure they get the rule. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like the censors really like. I'm not saying there was definitely more than that, but man, they like cut the crap out of this movie. Oh, I, you know, and I think that's part. Okay, I think that's another reason why I feel like the movie wasn't that good because it feel I felt like every kill was staring at the camera as if the camera was Jason. So you're seeing it from the point of view of of the victim. You don't really see the kills. Like it's like, like you see the you see the camera and you see the fear in their face and then like the camera moving towards them and they're moving back and it's like it made it look so cheesy. 
Like, it was very cheesy, I feel like, the way it was done, from looking at it from Jason's point of view. Yeah, yeah. No, the way they cut it. So, yeah, if you watch the – you'll see, like, the finished product or some photos of, like, what it was. And then we get to some of the kills. I'll, I'll uh, okay. talk about, like, some of them, like, that they uh, provided some, like, little behind the scenes. But, uh, yeah, so then we get – yeah, so then we meet some of the people, hopefully another future guest, Heidi, uh, Heidi Haddad, uh, who – her killing this movie. So remember when – I was just thinking about this when I was watching it last night. We covered Jason Takes Manhattan. I had my buddy Tom on. <laughs> I remember there was like so much foreshadowing when he was like, oh, well – The guitar they mentioned and everything. No, of course. Yeah. Well, the guitar was like a simple one that you and I could figure out. But there was like some of these in this movie. I swear with like Heidi's character, she talked about like swimming. Like I can't swim or I'm not the best swimmer. But then I was like, oh, maybe that makes no sense because she swam pretty far out before her death was kind of like – that was kind of disappointing. I'm sure they had something more than that. I, I guess. I mean, yeah, it was. I mean, uh, but, you know, I mean, but why wouldn't you go swimming naked in the middle of the night? Why not? And it's foggy. You it's, gotta it's, do that. I mean, it's like, and you see again. You see this in every movie. I don't like putting my toes in a lake that during oh. the day, during the day, let alone late at night. You're gonna go swimming, and she basically went by herself because he was taking forever to get out there. So yeah, what like, was he doing? How hard is it for him, a guy, to take like I if a girl's naked in the lake? You go took, in, obviously it, not. It took now. Him a I'm not gonna do that, but it took him a lot. Well, that, so that's the other thing. So. They're all camping in the woods, you know, for who knows how long. Why are they all dressed up? Like, they're all, like, wearing button-down shirts, dressed. Well, it's a birthday really... party. It's supposed to be. Okay, you're, you're staying. Yeah, yes. but they wore dress clothes the entire trip. More the two days that they lasted. <laughs> but, they, I mean, like, I, I'm going to the woods. I'm wearing work boots and, you know, jeans. Uh, party or not. You're telling me they have to be fancy at a, at a cabin that's right by a lake? They had all the balloons set up. They had really had it set up. They had for two a party balloons. They had two balloons two in the kitchen balloons. door. <laughs> and they had party horns because that's used later in the movie. Oh my goodness. It's quite <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, so now we're at uh Yeah, so then right away, that like that's what I love about these movies versus Michael Myers. Like there's so many times Michael Myers takes a while to show up in some of the movies, at least in this. I'm really referencing more more uh, Halloween ends. Yeah. But in this movie, boom, I don't even know what minute 15, she summons him out of the lake. He comes out. You see the skeleton. You see his spine. He just looks like – and Kane's a big dude. Like He's like a hulking guy. The other guys were kind of older. Yeah. He was jacked. But, okay, so what's her powers? I mean, I, I thought it was telepathy, right? But one – Telekinesis. Could... Okay, so telekinesis. So – but so she could also raise the dead. Well, as we know, Jason just needs a little spark. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, but it has nothing to do with telekinesis. I mean, like she no. she does some things here that are just not telekinesis throughout the whole movie. So um, I was wondering, like, so she, no, and she raises the dead twice. She does. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> She's good at that. It's almost <laughs> like maybe she could target it. Like, why the first time did she not raise her dad the first time? Well, it would have changed the whole movie. It would have changed the whole movie, but she also she struggles so mightily in the beginning of the movie of knowing how to even use her powers, and somehow halfway through she becomes a pro at it because she's so angry. I think. Well, when she really knows her powers is after she sees the vision of her mom dying. That's when she really is unleashing everything. But the matchbook because Cruz is like. Pissing her off, and then she's able to light that. Dude, the well, TV yeah, flying. Yeah, but that was, that was because she had, that was uncontrolled. Like I, I think like that was because she was so angry, you know. Yeah. But she does she she uses it so much at the end with Jason, like her battle. She controlled it like like she's been controlling it for years. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of her going to this living with a doctor is to learn how to control it. So how. So basically, she didn't. The whole DACA situation didn't need to happen. She could control it on her own if she just practiced. Yeah, and I don't even know was he there. He, I don't think he was really trying to control it because she had one incident. There wasn't any. And when he was talking to her, it's not like he's like, "Well, Tina, over the last seven years in my care, you in three years ago you did this, two years ago you did that." It was like he was just trying to take what happened seven years ago and use that. So she didn't really do anything with it before then. But, but then what was his purpose there then? 
He wanted to use what that happened seven years ago to be able to like manipulate it. Cause he, like when we, when he's watching the tape, which is so ridiculous that he filmed her uh, doing the matchbook and within sec in the house, when other people were there, he's recording a voiceover about, yeah, if I just make sure I anger her. And <laughs> oh. well, first of all, he basically started her therapy within five minutes of her being there. Like he yeah. didn't waste any time. Um, but I mean, I, I think, he, I mean, he was, he was going to use her as like, like a, a meal ticket, like, all right, now we're going to, we're going to show the world what you can do and I'll be your agent kind of thing. You know what? So, I, I mean, that was his goal, but like, I mean, he was, he was trying to get her to be able to control it, but again, she does it on her own times 10 times a hundred yeah. later on. So, all right. And I do love it. Like <laughs> as ridiculous as it is that it happened, what they do with the stunts and the special effects for the the final act, I yeah. know you don't like to rip it in the mask, which we'll get into all that later. Yeah, yeah. But it just looks so. No, no, yeah, oh uh, yes, God. I I agree. Um, but again, once again, somehow Jason's mask looks so clean. <laughs> Everything else on him is like hanging off, but the mask does never never gets dirty. <laughs> and even at the end of the movie, when they find it. It's com- it's clean. It's ripped, oh, but it's I clean. <laughs> like it's it's just like it's the un like breakable. Well, I should say breakable, but undirty. You know, mask. It's dude. That, that should be a, that should have been a commercial for recycling. Like plastics last forever, so you got to make sure that you recycle, and then you get a Jason in the ad. You get a Kane Hodder like drop the. Mask. So what? Drop his mask, and he's recycling his mask. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so dumb. <laughs> That'd be a good PSA. <laughs> and then Freddie could do one for matches. Like kids shouldn't play with matches. No, I, I think I, if anything, Jason should could do like you know Ginsu knives. You know, oh, that, that, that would be a better commercial. Late night. That's not a knife. <laughs> and then he brings out his knife. Wait, that it's it's Paul Dundee, and then he goes, <laughs> "That's not a knife." And then Jason machetes his arm, and he goes, and then he doesn't say anything. Maybe like bubbles come up, like thought bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so yeah so tina summons him and uh oh my god dude so th- then we get now we can get to the, the the michael and jane so michael and jane are on the way there she like she said herself she had the big hair when she was in the 80s and her line to him was like when was the last time you put oil on it <laughs> I, if somebody said that to me i'd be like I don't know. I, when I got an oil change, when do I, I don't think I have to add oil. Well, yeah, why was it the, the first thing that she said? Like that, that was the first thing like she thought of. And I, I love the fact that they're like, yeah, let's just stop here and camp right here. Well, not even that, not even camp right here. They walked like for a while. Like we saw well, them uh, on oh. camera walk for a while. Okay. Okay. So the woods there in this, if a uh, camp crystal Lake is might be the largest set of woods like a, a setting of woods I've ever seen because people seem to walk forever in this movie in the woods. Yeah. And literally like they're not that far from the house, but everybody's walking and somehow they never see or hear anything yet. There's no leaves in a tree. Like when they show like the video of the woods, it's bare, It's open. It, it's like yeah. really open. No one hears anything or sees anything the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, and and you, again, can't, Jason is a monster who's huge. He might walk the most silent way I've ever seen anyone walk because he's in the woods and not every single person surprised by him. He's like the sidler. He, he, do, he doesn't step shoes. on one twig, one leaf no. ever. <laughs> I feel like the only time he ever steps on anything in these movies because he does it in in this one. I think he does it on purpose to like scare him. Maybe he gets like a kick out of it. Like when they hear the, he's like, oh, I'm going to step on this right here. <laughs> and then the people turn and then he's there just waiting for them. Well, he, he, he does it in front of them. But like, again, the woods are pretty far. How is he like getting there so quietly every time? Every time. Like they're all surprised to see him. <laughs> okay. All right. It'd be so bad if he if that if that was the movie. It's like, holy shit! Do you hear that guy from so far away? Let's run. The end. <laughs> They're able to get away so quick. And well, he's not. And even when he sneaks in the house, he's not that. He takes big steps. He's no. not like tiptoeing in the house. Well, can you? Well, you could see him tiptoeing. 
<laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> that would, that like would be Fred funny. Flintstone. <laughs> do, 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 do. But it wouldn't matter if they were trying to run away because he always catches up to them anyway. So I don't think That's it really true. matters. So right. they'll trip. They'll trip <laughs> for sure. So I then, like to see so Jason then fall t- once. Like he's never <laughs> fallen. See him fall once. Yeah. Uh, no, that'd be funny, right? <laughs> I mean, Freddy Krueger's always falling. Like he's always <laughs> yeah. like he's always like tripping on something, you know, like it, which makes it because he. He's almost like part human, you know, in that aspect. So he, it is funny. Jason never is never stumbled. He's like a ninja. He's quiet and never, <laughs> never takes a wrong step. Never falls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we kind of like talked about this before. So when we get, uh, oh, yeah. How about the line that Michael says when Jane says, uh, when he's, uh, he says to Jane, let's camp here. She's like, here? And he goes, woods or woods? Yeah. <laughs> So ridiculous. No way. So you're, you're going to a non-campsite. So you know there's no lights at all like anywhere. It, yeah. it, it has to be so dark there, and you're just going to go randomly and, and, and park right there? Yeah. And and not for nothing, they can't be that far from the house because they find the bodies when they're going through the woods. So they have to be pretty close to the house. Oh, yeah. They're not that far. And they even walk past the Camp Crystal Lake sign that's knocked over. Right. Covered in brush. So, yeah. so at, at, at that point, why wouldn't you just walk to the house? <laughs> I well, mean, I, it's like they didn't. I don't think they've ever been there before because it was a buddy's house that was like kind of new. It was uh, Russell, the one that was with Sandra, the tall, like skinny dude. Right. But yeah, I don't know. Why. <laughs> I would have like tried because it seemed like they were super close. Yes. And then I think even later in the movie, when Tina's driving away, she drives past a car, but it, it's not their car. But in my head, I'm like, Maybe they like moved it because wasn't it like a van? I feel like it was like a VW no, van. No, no, they something. weren't a van. Oh, they were in a car. Yeah, maybe they only had so a maybe budget. Are... Maybe they only had the budget for the car for one day, so they figured, you know what, we have to use another car. Maybe the audience won't know. No, you're right. No, no, it was. Then if it was a car, yeah, it they had to be the car. When Tina, when Tina was terribly driving away later, uh, I, she drove past it. But no, so here's the thing. So Michael, like, if I'm somewhere that I don't know. I'm not going to be like, if I'm peeing, I'll be like, I'm going to pee real quick. Maybe like, I'll do like two big steps away from my wife. I'm not going to walk so far away that I'm like oh, shouting. Oh, yeah, this is your girlfriend. You can't pee in the tree right, right like a couple of, yeah, I mean, that made no sense. He really went Not deep. even for common courtesy. Yeah. Like if he was saying, oh, common courtesy. How about like, you can't look at her and she, you're in somewhere that you've never been before. <laughs> like something can happen, like animals, not even like. Thinking about Jason because nobody knows who yeah. Jason is, but something can happen to her. Now nah, I'm going to walk off and look <laughs> in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he got pee shy. P- maybe he does. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! But no. Then her kill. She's standing there. Jason creeps up, puts his dirty hand over her mouth, and then does again a ten spike through the back of the tree, which is seriously. That's a, that must be super sharp. I know he's super strong, but then it goes through her throat and boom, she's done. I, I, I have to question if that's a 10 spike because you're you're going to tell me back then every 10 has the exact same spikes? I'm sure there was different kinds of spikes. Well, the mom has they found the exact same one in the drawer. Well, no, that was the one that Jason no, it, took that and put it at the house. No, they were two separate ones because one had blood on it and one was at the, at the house. There were two separate ones. He probably well, took the other ones. Oh, he did not. They, he collects they, them along the way. He needs more weapons. Oh. He grabs whatever he can. Uh, uh, he uses so many different weapons in this movie. It's it's like ridiculous. Uh, I love it. I know. I kind of like Kane said that. Like when he was war, uh, like doing some of the scenes, he was like, "Oh, that'll be cool to use." No, but and, like and, the, no, go ahead. No, say the one at the end with like uh, Doctor Cruz. Yeah. He's like, I didn't even know that was a real thing. He goes, "I've never seen one since, but I saw it in the shed where we were filming." Well, that and, and that, we discussed that. Like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street does the same thing. Like, each kill is different. Jason always has different types of kills. It's not just yeah. the – Michael Myers is the same thing every time. Like, I feel like it's a For the very – yeah. It really is. So that's why, like, I think – that's why I think these movies stand out because they're very different, you know, uh, the way, you know the, how the character is. No, 100%. Michael Myers so then, is um, Whoa. <laughs> uh, Michael, My, Michael Myers just turned off the podcast. <laughs> so then we get uh, – so Jane's dead – Michael comes walking back, and uh, dude, his his kill is pretty cool. Again, tent spike. He takes it out from Jane, throws it through Michael's back. Boom. 
Okay, which is ridiculous. I mean, because Michael had a run again. First of all, he didn't hear his girlfriend at all get killed. He wasn't. I mean, he covered he's... her mouth. <laughs> okay, so <sighs> again, and he's running. He's running in the woods. There's trees everywhere, and somehow Jason could throw that. You say ten spike right perfectly in his back. <laughs> he's that good. He he's he's should be a little rusty in some of the things that he does in this movie oh. since he has been soggy for like seven years. He's been just like soggy. Just he's water. been dead for several years. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, he also climbs a lot in this, in this movie. Cause oh, somehow dude, he jumps to the window is awesome. Well, oh. it is awesome. But I mean, I question would a zombie really jump like that. I mean, it was very human like with the way he did it, but I'm talking about the fact that he climbs trees because how many bodies fall from the sky? In his movie. Oh, I know. So you're telling me Jason's climbing a tree, holding a body, <laughs> and placing them so they happen to fall when someone's there? Like he does it multiple and then, times. And then letting go. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like balloons. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's so great. It lands right on like Maddie's head. <laughs> and you so if, here's the. Wait, wait, hold on. So you think if Jason had a laugh, that's what he would sound like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I can't do it right now, but I would think it'd be like. Uh, uh, from uh, Wacky Races. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. Uh, or where, where's uh, oh, Jason's from New Jersey? I was going to say, if he was like a, a Southern guy, like a real Southern laugh. But... Yeah, uh, I, I can't see that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but anyway, so then, so then the first... There's like three lines that Dr. Cruz has in this movie oh. that are like beyond like I'm telling you out of all the adults in any of the horror movies we've oh. ever done. Oh. And that even includes in Nightmare on Elm Street when the mo- parents are putting sleeping pills in their yeah. kids to make them sleep. Dude, when when Nick comes over to invite her over to the party and she leaves and the mom and Dr. Cruz goes, oh, where's Tina? Oh, she she got invited by the boy next door to a party. And he's like. Oh, I thought no distractions. I'd hate to send her back to the hospital. Oh, and he, he says it like with his eyebrows. I'm like, whoa. He he is awful. He's at, wow. I mean, the fact that when he's when she's trying to push the the I forget what she was trying to push in the beginning, and he's like yelling at her, and then she's like, I can't do it, and he's like, You're lying. Like he's like screaming, <laughs> You're lying to her. Like this poor girl is a complete mess. He's awful. He is Ugh. awful. <laughs> what? Oh my god, absolutely awful. Yeah, so let's talk about some of the characters that we see at the party. Oh, oh hold on. And there's one yes. other thing. I don't know if we passed it yet. When okay. she said that when he one of the big things why he's doing what he's doing at Crystal Lake is because the guilt over father uh, over your father's death is a powerful thing or something like that. <laughs> like it's like he she, he was throwing her father's death in her face. Like that's how awful he is. A monster. He's a monster. He's worse than Jason. <laughs> he deserved it. He would. Yeah, he's the real villain. <laughs> he's the true villain <laughs> in this movie. So uh, yeah. So then we get so some of the characters. I, I have the list of them. We don't have to go through every single one. But Eddie, uh, Eddie, who ended up in, like after this, like he was a he was a big voice actor in like a lot of cartoons. But uh, yeah, he's like the writer of a knockoff Star Trek movie. He was such a geek. <laughs> and he's like sort of stoned. I think, and he's just like rambling on about this screenplay that he wrote. It is the most bizarre group of people. The way they're all acting, like they're Daniel? all act, just all, just the guy's wrapping himself in ribbons, and the, like yeah, the girl that looked like um, the girl that plays uh, Lisa on The Simpsons, there with the glasses, the, the little the, well, that's Heidi, that's Heidi, yeah. Okay. Like, Who plays Sandra, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many, like, just the, the way they all acted at this house, it was just bizarre behavior. Yeah. Bizarre. David, who was, like, the kind of greaser-looking kid. And I was going to ask you about this line. I don't know if this is a line back in the day. I'm not saying you obviously were young in the 80s. But the line that they say when he comes up to, like, grab a beer, she goes, oh, outrageous. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't think I've positive? ever used. I've never used that line before. Uh, and but, he can't chug. How how would that guy get oh a girl after that? And the way he like chugs a beer, he pulled it out of the fridge. Nobody shook that up. So I don't know how that happened. But <laughs> that's but dude. That would be like no way. Like that guy's gonna party foul. 
Yeah, no, it, it, like I said, they they all. I feel like it was a group of people that, in a, in the real world, would never get along. Like they're so pol- like Everybody was so opposite. Outside of maybe the the stud guy that likes Tina and the girl with the pearls, you know, like obviously they were in the cool crowd, but they, they wouldn't be hanging out with half these people. No yeah, way. That's what it seemed like. Almost like there was a couple people that were really good friends. You had like the couple. And then you had like Maddie and and Robin were friends. I liked Robin. She's the one who had the quick like uh, gratuitous. Hey, let's get boobs in this movie. Yeah. But uh, no, you had like these different people. So it almost seemed like that, but they didn't let yeah. us know. Like, hey, I never knew him. Like, if they would have used that, then we would have been like, okay, that's why they kind of don't all click because they really don't know each other and they're only there for Michael. But even uh, even the couple in the van, like. They had a very short storyline. Like, I mean, I, I almost forgot about them. Like, they like they really, like, you barely saw them in the movie. You know, um, even before the van scene, you didn't see much of them. Like, it was just very, like, you saw them just, like, a little arguing, and that's it. It was, like, I feel like, you know, they, they focused on, obviously, like, the main three people at the party. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. No, they only argued. We saw them argue because Ben ended up, like, he said he was doing something else, and he was hanging out with Michael. And then she was pissed about it for like most of the movie until they got into the van and then the van was rocking and well, we'll, we'll get to that later. But uh, yeah. So like everyone there has like their own little thing. Yep. And, but I'm telling you like Melissa, she was an actress, like she passed away, but in the behind the scenes, everybody says like, she was the nicest person. So she played like a polar opposite of herself, but dude, how cruel she was oh. to Tina and oh. she did to Eddie yeah. And her kill up for me is like top 10 all time because it's just so cool. Like that scene is just so rad. Yeah, yeah. No, I, she she did play that role very well. I mean, uh, you know, but like, like I said, I, I at this party, they really, to me, there wasn't a likable character. Uh, they were just anno- all annoying and just like, the, yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan. So what do you think about the chemistry between Nick and Tina? Very fast. Like, like I, I, I get he, and and she felt very comfortable, real quick with him, you know. She's she's dealing with all these issues. She met him for two seconds, and then like I don't know, like like they like, and he seemed to give her a lot of attention without really knowing her. Yeah, it's like because he didn't want to be there. He only knew his cousin. It's like he didn't even know Melissa that well, right? He, Melissa was like more of like a friend of a friend, and she was like all oh, she wanted him. So maybe he like gravitated to her even more because he's like I want to piss off Melissa no but the reason I ask is so this movie dubbed by the fans is Fry Gay the 13th because a lot of the cast is gay oh and really Nick Nick was gay and so they said even on set like some of the actors were like yeah they didn't have like the a lot of chemistry and then they found out obviously later but uh yeah like in the fan circles there's like a bunch of uh, wow that's, yeah. you know that's amazing because like I'm surprised that they didn't have a gay couple then because like, I would not know. I think they all played a great, you know, like typecast, I guess, yeah. you know, but yeah, you know, um, w- with Nick, I-, I just, you know, there was crazy written all over Tina, like every yeah. scene. Why? There's no way in real life, any guy who just met this girl, who's running out, screaming out of a house, weird things are happening every time she's around. There's no way you're staying. There's no way. No way. No way. No. <laughs> it's not worth it. Something that crazy, like, hearing the stories, like, yeah, my dad, like, my oh. dad died here. I'd be like, oh, no way. I, I mean, I mean, couples break up when one's crazy after dating for two years. <laughs> you know? Oh, like, I've dated so, one, yeah. So this is someone that you just met at, literally, it's, I think the, the whole relationship is two days, right? It's it, Everything takes place in two days, I think. <sighs> is it even that long? Well, because they have the, it's nighttime at the party, and then the next day. So it's definitely oh, yeah, two days, yeah, okay. and then at nighttime yeah, yeah. is the next day. So I think it's only two, not even two. I mean, yeah, two days. Um, he, he there's no way he, he can't be that good of a guy to keep hanging around. That's you know. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have Tina has like a flashback, and oh no, when the kid starts uh, when he drinks the beer and he starts coughing, then she sees. Uh, Michael dead. She sees like the cousin dead. The whole Correct. Michael. Yeah. So she sees like that vision. So she runs back. She has another flashback of her dad. Sees the tent spike in the door. Runs in time to, to see Doctor Cruz. And then 
There's okay, just so, a mark. We don't see him take that. No, as no, the you, audience. No, so you don't. Pretty quick. So you're telling me, besides tele, telekinesis, she also can raise the dead and she can see the past. She has visions. Okay. All right. Okay. She's a jack of all trades. I she don't really know if Carrie could do that. I don't know if and, Carrie could see the past. Do they explain why she has all these powers at all? Like, I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, it just seems like very out there. Like, you know, because in all these movies, you don't, you know, obviously they're all normal people. And then all of a sudden you have this girl who has basically every single power that's out there. She's a Marvel. She's a superhero. She's the original Marvel. <laughs> okay. She's uh, Miss Marvel. <laughs> Okay. So then we do the, the what they did in – well, I guess they sorted it in five, but they do it every so often in these movies. You get these rando people that we don't even care about. They're just there for, for dying, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. Like J- Jason lives, the uh, the paintball people. We don't care about those. They're just there for the scene. And that's what we get with the, the couple. And then uh, the boyfriend has to go get some wood. He goes all by himself. And, dude, this shows how – strong Beekler made Jason in this one. Dude, he, the fact that he punches him yeah. through the chest and he's dead. Well, the guy in Temple of Doom does the same thing. He does, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, I guess it's... it's. I think it's like a Bruce Lee thing. Like, it's like all how you, you know, the angle you do it, the, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. pressure, you know, like anybody could do that. It's like ripping throats out in Roadhouse. A tip, <laughs> okay, okay. A little twist, a little twist of the finger. <laughs> I, I really wonder if that's possible to rip someone's throat out. Like, I don't know. What, what do you think is harder to do, rip someone's throat out or punch through the chest? Oh, punch through the chest. You think it's harder? Oh, yeah. To get, get through all that's got to be so hard. To rip oh. a throat's hard, too, but at least you're only, I don't know, even just holding that. Oh my yeah, but, God. Okay, but you, you're ripping the throat where you're like fingers. So, like, Ugh. you're telling me your fingers are that strong to pull, you know, the throat out? Like, they I would think claws. I would think that's e- that would that's harder to do is pull the throat <laughs> out because you're using your t- fingertips. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if anybody's ever pulled the throat out or punched <laughs> somebody in the chest, uh, add sequels only on social media. Uh, drop us a line. So here is the scene of all scenes, like you talked about. So I have to obviously patch that in real quick. Uh, this is definitely uh, a top five, I would say, kill in Friday. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Oh, my God. She's like, oh, yeah. By the way, this, oh. is, this is also one of the biggest sleep bags I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when he drags her out there. Well, they had to make it big because there's a bucket of blood in there. It was like 20 pounds. Oh. And the sensors made them cut it. They had it at like five hits and then four and then three and they're like it can only hit once and then drop so that's what we got reduced to so that's that's all we ended up getting from that no that's so a nice man, so swinging, I, the way he swings that i mean talk, again talk about power lifting up a body and, and, and just swinging it like a baseball bat hard enough to knock her out dead they like, revisit that, which one we we got to cover the the latest one, the twelfth one. They do that in the opening scene. Oh my god, he oh, like cooks the girl in it and then slams her into a tree. It's amazing. Wait, he cooks a girl. He like hangs her over the fire and then while she's he, alive. Oh yeah, while she's alive and she's like screaming and then he hits her against a tree a bunch of times. Yeah, this is a, again knowing what he looks like with his mask off. He's that creative. He's a monster. No. He's a monster. He doesn't have a brain in there anymore. How is he able to do things like this? Smart. It's so he, he regenerates. Maybe Smart. Like each kill, each kill, you get a little bit of a brain. Smart. Back. He died when he was eight years old. So his brain, <laughs> his brain is of an eight year old. And now well, a monster. His body grew. So maybe his brain grew too. Okay. Your brain could grow, but if you have no knowledge being put in there, you're not getting anything. <laughs> <laughs> you see like uh like scenes in like uh if they did like a prequel and it's like jason at the public library like with his head down <laughs> it's like all right the pr- proper ways to kill someone with a seat back and he's like <laughs> strolling through and <laughs> oh my god that's amazing <laughs> so yeah so we get them they're done he chopped wood he's dead she's dead and uh yeah so then now it's the next morning they all party now they're really wondering where michael is 
Nick and Tina are having like a nice little Andy Griffith opening, throwing stones at the water. Okay, wait. So you're telling me they're there for this guy? Is it Mark? Mark, right? Michael. Oh, Michael. Okay. So he's there for Michael, his birthday. They're partying all night, not once questioning where Michael is. Well, remember, no, what they said was, man, he probably got another DWI. <laughs> okay, even so. So, the, the, okay, so he got a DWI, DWI. So he's in jail. So they're going to leave him there. They're there to party with him. They completely forgot about him and just party with Adam. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Good friends. And it was his birthday. Uh, right. <laughs> what a, a birthday good... present. <laughs> yeah. If he didn't I... die and he did and he was and they picked him up from the drunk tank, like the next day it's like, guys, why didn't you get me like I don't know? Nothing. Okay. He had one phone call and he didn't call. So Okay. So it's his fault. It is it. Maybe okay. it is his fault. Okay. <laughs> Let's blame him. <laughs> so yeah, they're tossing the rocks, and then we get so how about the diss that Melissa says to the other girls about Tina? Oh. She says, oh, he's out there with Marilyn Munster. I'm like, that's a compliment. It is a, com- a you know, real compliment. <laughs> it, yeah, but I don't think she meant it that way. I know yeah. she did mean it. Like, I know. For, I, I'm like, yeah, Marilyn yeah. Munster. Somebody who set me up with a girl like 15 years ago, and they're like, Doug, she's smart. She looks just like Marilyn Munster. I'd be like, oh, my God. And then I had to say, which Marilyn Munster? And then there was like four of them in two years. Would you Would you date someone with the last name Munster? No, why not? You 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 have no you would have no problem. It's not like I'm going to take her last name if we got married. No, but so maybe she keeps Doug okay. Munster. So, but she keeps her last name. So, yeah, Mrs. Munster, can you, you know, like, you're going to hear that a lot. <laughs> Miss <don't>... Munster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man jeez monster jeez that's all i think about uh, so uh yeah so then we get like robin and maddie and this is where like robin is a huge bitch to her like maddie's just trying to like she likes uh and David. And, and they seem like good friends like in the beginning yeah. like they, they were talking for a little bit you know they were both remarking how cute he is or whatever and then the other one well i mean let's be honest I mean, if you had, oh, no, your, totally, you know, I mean, so let's, you know, I mean, you know, not to be mean, but I mean, you know, the other one really didn't have a chance. No, no, I definitely 100% <laughs> Robin for, but her way, to say that. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Man, girls can be so cruel. Oh yeah. We're best friends. <laughs> oh, you're not pretty enough for him. Oh. Why would you wear makeup? Well, she's being honest. That's her friend. <laughs> I <dang it. laughs> Oh. I mean, they, they definitely found the most frumpy girl that they possibly could find for that role. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. so then Melissa, like we kind of talked about earlier, like do, it kind of reminds us like in part five when that girl was such a bitch to the guy when she was like, oh, you think I would get with you? <laughs> so so Melissa does that with Eddie, the sci-fi uh, writer, yeah. writer, like all over me. He's like, really? Really? You really like me? Do you think – do you think like – if if a, if a, like a good looking girl said that to you, would you like you you she's she's talking to you? I would say if you answered that way, she's gonna change her mind immediately. Like if you're gonna yeah. be if you're gonna be like that, you're done. So like I mean like I think he blew it that moment. I mean she had no plans to really like him anyway. Obviously she wanted to make the other well, guy she jealous. She was in bed with him, so she didn't have to make Nick jealous to get into bed with him. Well, I, I like how she she did that because she said that she was hoping to. That he would he would see them together, but so you know. Have, so how long do, do you plan on taking the sh- you know the charade on that you know uh, you know oh, he hasn't seen me yet let's let's have sex again you know it's it's keep doing it until he walks in it's like so let's it's, date okay <laughs> let's move in together okay we're gonna have a kid and maybe we'll walk in on the delivery room it's, and I'll be like Nick it's such a dumb and dumber two situation like you know yeah. <laughs> god damn it so here a little story time because it. Because whenever we talk about these random things and I have these stories from my past, I I had a girl do that to me when I was like, I was 18. There was this uh, gorgeous girl that went to Mount St. Mary's. I don't remember her name. I just remember she looked like, uh, what's your name from Species? Oh, like Natasha, any of my buddies are listening, Hendricks? maybe. Yes. Looked like her. So we're at this rich person's party, this girl that I actually. Yeah, I want to see proof did. of this. 
I mean, I mean she girl, looks like her. I'm not, the girl's pretty hot. So I mean, to, I don't know. I don't know where she. I don't know what her name. Know what her name is. But anyway, they had like these this all these old like wedding dresses and like I think from the girl's house or at uh, like mom's wedding. So there was like wedding dresses and like get gowns for like the bridesmaids. So the girl goes, Doug, would you put this on? And I'm just like, she was in a wedding dress already. No joke. So I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. And then she's like, she ever? I was like wait, eating wait, out of her hand. Wait, wait, hold on, yeah. hold, hold on a second. She yeah. asked you to put on a wedding dress? Yeah. Why? Oh, we were like playing beer pong. It was like our team was going to do oh, okay. I know it's I, silly. Wait, okay, I thought you were alone with her, and she's saying, can you oh, put on no. – Can you put – Doug, can you put this on? You're like role-playing. No, no. It was a huge party. And then <laughs> and then she – again, she pranked me. I'll, I'll say that right now. She goes – Doug, are you hungry? And I'm I'm not even joking. This is like the most effed up thing that somebody ever did to me. She's like, do you want this pasta? And I was like, oh, sure. She's like, I made it for you. I ate it. And it was like full of like the hottest sauce in the world. And I couldn't, I almost couldn't breathe. Oh. It was that bad. So wait, she pranked me. Wait, wait. So you're more annoyed the fact that she gave you pasta with hot sauce and not the fact that she's making you wear a wedding dress? That's fine. I'm comfortable in my own skin. That's okay. Fine. I've dressed like a girl before for Halloween. Whose wedding dress was it? <laughs> I think it was the girl's mom <laughs> or something. What if she was, was what, what if her then. mom pa- passed away and she's saving that dress as like remembering her mom and you're walking around playing beer pong in it? Or if I didn't know that and I went, okay, wait, I wait. am the spirit of your mom. Not, not only that. How about the fact that you're eating pasta wearing a white wedding dress? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, can you imagine if you spilled? <laughs> I remember wedding. the girl with the fork putting it to my mouth, and I was like leaning forward. I remember as soon as oh, in my, my lips, goodness. she's like, "It's good, right?" And I like, <laughs> and I was like, Bruh. "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. Lots of fun. Oh yeah, Lots sure, okay. But yeah, so no, I like uh, these judging up these memories from my past. <laughs> so yeah, so then, uh, so then we get. Uh, Tina uses her powers kind of like the first time other people see it rather than like Bad News Cruise. She makes the pearls rip off when Mel- uh, Melissa is making fun of her. Yeah, but but do, how but, about... But do do they yeah. know that she did that? Cause they, no, I, no. Right, they right, no right, idea. right. Okay. It was kind of like, whoa, what just happened? Yeah, yeah. Like she was right, mad. Right. Not like right. anybody thinks that's really going to happen to anybody. Right, right. Okay. But then Dr. Cruise pisses off Tina. She throws the TV at him. Tina runs out of the house and then runs into Nick. And then she goes, do you have a picture of your cousin? And why would he, he have a, a picture of his cousin? I, I, I was questioning, like, why would he have a picture of his cousin in his wallet? And it wasn't even them together. I, that's, it was just weird. Like, why would, I mean, you know, I, re, I remember having wallets back in the day that had the, all those pictures. Uh, of we, course. Right. I don't think I had one picture of any of my cousins. And I have a lot of cousins. No, it was always empty. It was always empty. <laughs> It was it was mostly empty. I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know, but I don't think I, I mean, again, I have a lot of cousins. I love my cousins. Never had a picture of them in there. That's a little wow. weird. Okay. Yeah, it would be weird. Okay. You're just sitting there like when there's no cell phones, like, huh, let me, uh, let me. It's, it's almost road. like, let's make a deal. Like, all right, who has a picture of their cousin? <laughs> Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Nick? <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Oh my god! So yeah, so then we she goes, oh, that is him. She like I saw him in my vision, and he. I'm sorry, he's dead. And it's like holy shit. Then we get Sandra and Russell. That we talked about them earlier. She goes into the water naked within seconds, and then we get <laughs> Russell, whose name should have been Chad. Like he oh, reminded me oh, of a Chad. Absolutely. absolutely. His kill's cool. So what they cut, like you said, you only saw like him like swing the thing like a golf club yeah. and then they cut. So they actually had to go all the way through like on that same shot, like that wide shot and the blood like shot up. And then you, I saw a behind the scenes photo and his makeup was so cool. It was like his whole face was like had a line in it. And they it don't have a, they have a video of that anywhere. Like, is there a video? Oh, I think they have a video of it. Yeah, from that far shot. But I think okay. they had a close up set up of showing everything, but oh, they cut cool. everything. But that was a cool one. But I like and then Sandra is like, could you imagine like you look back and you see your the your boyfriend dead and then you see this creature? Uh, how did he get in the in the water? Uh, how did he get in the water that fast? Uh, uh, that, 
and without making a noise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, she, again, had to be – he had to have entered somewhere close there. So, yes. like – and she didn't seem to really, like, try to get out of the water. No, she didn't. She really – I and mean, she like – Huh? Huh? She had, she, pl- like- she had plenty of time to swim back. Or maybe she was embarrassed she had no clothes on. <laughs> She's like, he doesn't see me naked. But he pulls her down. And the only thing I did like about the kill was uh, him dragging her body out. I thought that was pretty like- I, I I wrote that down. I'm like, he's dragging a naked girl out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> he don't play. He's like, I got to make sure I present the body. Like, he's very particular about, like, presenting In this everything. movie? He he present he sets up everybody, which yeah. I don't know how he has time to do it. The because he, he it, they are all set up so perfectly. Like I said, yeah, I think there's at least two in trees that are hanging in trees. Oh yeah, no, two of them. Well, well the one is hanging in the tree yeah. that falls on Maddie. Yeah, but then the other ones are like twisted in the tree. Yeah. Like I think Michael's body. It's so cool the way it looks. Like it's obviously a dummy, and then they when they do close up. They put his face there, but holy crap! Why? Why do you awesome. think he does that? I don't know. I, I don't know who started that. If that's something from the sixties and seventies horror movies, but dude, it, like even in like the second and third one, or even the fourth one, because everybody seems to go out of town, or even the fifth one, they go out of town and then they come back. Like the final girl, when they come back. All hell's broken loose, and they can't find anybody. But everybody's placed in all these different no, rooms. No, no, yeah. but I, I, but I wonder, like, I mean, in Jason's mind, his which, logic. Uh, why do you think he does it? Because funny, he, he looks like he has no logic whatsoever. He just he wants to kill anyone that's in the area of Crystal Lake, and that's it. Like it's that's it. So to place them for whatever reason, I don't know why he would do that. He's like, I like to have fun, guys. I want to have fun. If so I'm gonna kill you, at least get a little laugh. You know what? That makes sense because he's got the mind of an eight year old. So he's just, he he's, he's being silly. <laughs> Has like whoopee cushions and like he's trying to get a little laugh at it. Right? <laughs> oh man. So then, uh, yeah. So again, Melissa's fighting with Nick, but then we get Dr. Cruz. We see him at his desk and he opens the drawer and we see him with the tent spike. And then he leaves and he goes walking into the woods. Cause he's like, holy shit, this is real. Like her, what she saw is actually like real, like he. But he doesn't like, look panicked, someone. though. Like, you know, he he knows obviously that that now at this point there is a killer here. So why yeah. is he still hanging around there? Like, why does he not seem worried? Yeah, he's just walking around in a sports coat, yeah. looking like nothing <laughs> is like, and he like does like a slow look around, like no fear. But that does give Tina's mom time to snoop into the into his office and then she finds a tent spike she watches the video here's the voiceover she knows that uh he's using her and then even dr cruz finds that's the craziest part too dr cruz finds russell in a tree with a tent spike and nothing and he's still okay with it he's still fine with it yeah and when he goes back here's a the second terrible line he says and he has a smirk on his face because he because the mom's like, she, she doesn't need to go back to the hospital. And he goes, oh, I need to put her back in the hospital as soon as possible. I'm like, what, whoa. What, who has control of her that he's able to do that? Like, you maybe know, like he has I, like the concert. Maybe he has something signed over to him. And then she's like, then, then shame state. on the mom. Because, I mean, Terrible. how do you allow your child to be like dragged around by this loony doctor? Like, it's it's ridiculous. Like, no, no. horrible, horrible parenting. Terrible parents. Yeah. Terrible. She might, she might be worse than Kaiser. To, again, because it's her daughter, and she really doesn't like. She sees what's going on. She she, she clearly sees her daughter. Your your do- your daughter goes to a doctor and is freaked out every single time she talks to him. You're going to continue with going to that same doctor? Absolutely no, not. If it's bad news, Cruz, no way. <laughs> no, any doctor, I'd be like, all right, this is. There's a lot of other doctors out there. <laughs> maybe maybe the mom has terrible health insurance. There's only <laughs> one person in the network, and it's bad news, Cruz. I'm, I'm betting he's not even a doctor. That's my guess. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. He goes, I go by doctor because Mr. didn't sound that official, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, so then we get this one. Tina hears everything about going to the hospital. She already has her suitcase. She drives off. And then she sees the vision in the road of her mom but, getting so gunned. She's, so there's one car there. She's driving, leaving her mom there. 
Okay. Maybe she feels the way you just said. Maybe she's like, holy shit, my mom has not looked out for me. Like, she could have probably got me out of this. No, because she goes back. Ago. She goes back to look for her mom. So I don't see sure. that. I just think. Well, like, you're always going to help your mom. Maybe just in that moment, she was like, I gotta get out. What do you mean, her? She, she knows there's a killer out there, and she's leaving her mom there with a crazy doctor. How is that helping? <laughs> <laughs> and she does total the, their only car. <laughs> and when she gets out of the car, she leaves the door open. She just she like does, yeah. walking around. <laughs> and she really wasn't driving that far, but she she decides instead of take, walking back through taking the street back, which no, she goes to the woods. Yeah. Again, there's no there's no fear for anybody walking in these woods at night. I don't like walking in the woods in my own backyard, let oh, alone in a strange place. And dude, everybody... when I'm done recording this, I run into the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like 50 yards from my back door. No, That's what I, I mean. Like, I mean, so, so no one, like, no one has a fear of these woods at all. And she knows, obviously, he was killed somewhere because she saw the vision, and she's still going to go out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and now we cut back to Maddie. She's all done up. She has makeup, and she's looking for David. Do you think she looks much outside? Better? Well, she's got, she's got, she's got a face on. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, why? Why was she going outside looking for? The, like, why did she think that he? See, was that must have been a cut scene that she wanted to smoke with him because she said that earlier. But they must have cut something. There must have been a conversation like David because it made no sense up. that she was automatically going right out there looking for him. Made zero. Yeah, yeah. Like, and David, again, not a huge house. Walking in the woods alone. Yeah, like this is just so much walking in the woods alone is ridiculous. And then she, oops, I lost my earring. Okay. Okay. So she loses her earring. Now, if you're, let's just say your wife loses an earring. Would you just dig in the one spot you're standing at? Because she <laughs> drop, she she loses the earring. She notices your lost earring. She decides to bend down where she is and start searching right there. What do you like walk the path that you just walked in there and keep the eye on the ground to thinking that it fell off that way? Like not digging for it? Like why would it, why would it, why would it be underground? It should not be under there, but luckily she does find it. She does. She puts it back in real quick, and then I know her, and I swear this is Russell again, right? He Because Russell had a plaid shirt, yes, and he was the one that Dr. Cruz saw. So Jason moved him from the tree to hang him real quick to fall onto Maddie. So Jason knew that Maddie's going to drop her earring right there so that, that the body falls exactly where she dropped the earring. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. He planned the whole thing. It's like a maybe, Scooby Doo at the end. Maybe he has telekinesis, and he made her. <laughs> yes. And she, he, as he saw her coming, he made her earring fall off. <laughs> he did like that. <laughs> falls off. But her kill is cool. Like when she's in the tool shed, and just the oh. shot, the the side shot of seeing him lurking behind while she's against the wall. And there was a funny thing in the behind the scenes. She said her ex-boyfriend, like after they broke up in the late 80s, early 90s, he would see if they ran in, if they ran into each other, he would say, I don't like you so much that when I need to... Oh, what does he say? He, She said, like, he rewatches my death scene oh. over and over again. Really? Kind of <laughs> that is yeah. creepy. So... She okay, so she's in there. She's hiding under, I don't know, like a a little room that she found that she crawled under. Yeah, it's like a little like room within the tool shed. Okay, though. so clearly Jason doesn't see her there. Why did she crawl out? <laughs> I don't know. Like, like if if you're hiding from from Jason and you 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 go to this room, like or it, it, and this happens a lot in these movies, people don't waste a lot of time when they think the person left. Like you right, like you know, like when when someone's searching in the house for them, you know, and they're hiding in the closet, like we always talk about. <laughs> they wait until like they leave the room, and then they immediately walk out. Like to me, if I'm hiding from him, I'm staying there as long as possible. If yeah. I feel like he walked away, I'm not le- I'm not getting out of this room because he clearly not doesn't think he's under there. And she, she, I don't think she waits more than a minute when she thinks Jason's gone. She crawls right out. Yeah, she crawls out, and then we see him. Right there, but just to see him like go through what he's gonna do from behind, I thought that was pretty cool. And then just the ripping through and using like the fisherman's hook, which is used to like grab like ice or like logs and stuff. I was like, wow, that's cool. Why, like, would, that's that, why would that be? Him. Why would that be there though? 
Crystal Lake. It's Jersey. It's cold. Maybe they use it to do something with the ice. Okay. All right. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. They filmed this one in Alabama, I think. This is an Alabama one. Save mm-hmm. some, save some dough. So maybe All Jason, maybe only... Jason does have an, uh, a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> you might be a Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So then, yeah. So they get that death, and then we get Doctor Cruz again, and the mom. They now they're like a team looking for Tina. They're going all around, and then Jason is at the house. Okay, he's outside the house. So the mom and and. Cruz are looking for Tina in the woods when they know she took the car to leave. Well, so they why... saw her crash. They found the car. Oh, yeah. Okay. But where were they? They were looking in the woods before that, right? Or they were look. They... No, they were walking down the road. No, they walked down the road. No, they drove down the road. Dr. Cruz's car was there. They didn't drive together. Yes, they did. They didn't drive together? No, no. He was at the house. And that's when oh, she okay. says, oh, hi, All right. bad news, right. Cruz. All right. All right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. See, well, All right. now that changes your opinion. Now, on the movie? now it does not, but it just now gave it makes a, a little sense. They have a, it makes a little sense. Okay. Okay. I thought I thought it was and the then, magic woods that everybody keeps finding each other in the woods because <laughs> it does happen a few times. Yeah. So then at this point, we have like three couples boning all at the same, a little sort of like <laughs> the obviously exact Melissa, same time. <laughs> yeah, Melissa's being uh, a monster, but uh, no. So then we get the van, the van scene. So ridiculous. And the guy in the behind the scenes is pretty funny. The the actor who played Ben, he was like, yeah, I'm sleeping with my girlfriend and the van's shaking. Oh, let me get out of this and go see if it's Michael. No, I should have just went back to my girlfriend. What made him think it was the guy like th- that didn't make sense right there. But what I laughed at. So when she sends him out to, to, to first of all, they were trying to surprise him thinking there was a yeah. cousin, but he gets out. Now he was just having sex with her. He gets out of the van He's got basically he's getting dressed as he's leaving the van because he's got really nothing on him. But I think like his underwear on his boxer shorts. He walks around yeah. the van, and by the time he gets around the other side of the van, he's got his shoes, pants, and shirt on. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's amazing. <laughs> he literally had sneakers on, pants, and his shirt buttoned up, and it was oh, basically God. walking around the van like he pulled like a like a Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing! No, I didn't even notice that. But uh, I love how Jason somehow was like walking around at the same time because he came out from where he just came from and then crushed his head like a grape. Another kill that they they had a whole thing set up of squeezing the head. I was, was waiting. So I was waiting for something more graphic. Like the yeah. way, like the, the minute he grabbed his, his his head and started squeezing, I'm like, oh, you know what though? They already did. They already did that with the the one with the guy's eye eyeballs pop out and in 3d yeah no, yeah they did do that one yeah but he was just like squeezing yeah, it and it was like oh my god yeah but you know what you said that i think it's pretty funny like can you imagine like seeing jason like tiptoeing behind him as he walks around the van and he has, as he's looking you see jason like tiptoeing going <laughs> he does peep like in a lot of the movies we don't see it like michael oh, Myers always definitely peeping. does that no he, he jason is peeping but I'm saying we don't see it as often. Like in part eight is the one movie that Manhattan, you really do see. Him peeping he, a lot. he peeped yeah. in the, on the boat. That's oh, what that's I mean. It, that's yeah, he, oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. When he's like, I don't know where like the girl's looking and he's yeah. in the hallway. Then yeah. he's not. Then he's in the bathroom. <laughs> then no. So there's like a lot of peeping. He's always peeping. But in, in, in this one, the fact that he popped out from the side of the van that Ben just came from squeezes his head. And then the girlfriend's like, Hey, what's going on? And then, Somehow she does not see him who he's got to be in her almost vision. And he puts the thing into her, into her eye. And, and okay. So one, nobody ever hears anyone else getting murdered ever. No Never. one hears it. And can you die with an eye? Like, like she died by eyeball, like eyeball death. Well, no, if something goes through your eye, it goes to your brain. Your brain's beyond there. I don't think so. I don't think your brain is up here. Your eyeballs here. I think there's like there's like room in there that if you there's poke someone in the eye, brain. I don't think so. I don't I don't think you could die that way. But how embarrassing is that though to die with a party uh, was it a party had a party horn? It was like a party horn. Party right? horn. <laughs> That's a pretty bad way. To that die. was an open casket. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You think they would leave it in there? <laughs> so, so, so it was an open casket. They're, gonna, they're not going to take the uh, the you know put like a patch on or something. They're going to leave the horn in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she didn't know until she saw it at the premiere. Cause they did a big premiere at like the Chinese theater in, uh, in LA. And she didn't know the horn sound effect was in it until she oh. saw it. <laughs> Cause you that's heard that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's funny. Oh my gosh, man. So then we get, so they're both dead. And now we get to, uh, so Eddie's getting rejected by Melissa and he's, and dude, and the line that he says after getting rejected by this hottie, like, and she, I think what makes her even hotter is cause she's a bitch. Like that attitude she has, he goes, huh, that's fine. I got denied by the finest science fiction publications in the world. And he goes, now I'm going to take a cold shower and I have a date with a soap on a rope. <laughs> But did he get denied? Because he slept with her. No, they didn't do anything yet. It was like the beginning. Oh, of... I thought I thought they already did it. And she's like, "All right, I can't do it anymore." I thought she no nah. did it. Ah, uh, okay, all right. That's why she was probably just like, "I'm gonna kiss you a little bit every minute, and then hopefully Nick, <laughs> Nick, are you there? Oh, Nick's not in here. I'm gonna take my bra off right now, Nick. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear a creak? <laughs> Okay. Nick, come in here. <laughs> I mean, like, she couldn't have just, like, just fooled around with him a little bit. To, she had to go almost all the way to, to get Nick's attention. Like, that's... Which that's She had to know that, unless they hooked up before, if there was that history that they told us as the audience, he had no interest in her. I, I was, was going to say I was gonna say that, that he really... Not only did he not have interest, he seemed, like, disgusted by her. You know, oh, like their yeah, interaction. Hated her. So what made her think that this is going to make him jealous? <laughs> <Just know. laughs> so poor planning on her part. <laughs> yeah. She even says that to him and he like has his face like, he like kind of like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like the, no. And then the Jason does the typical cuts the power to the house, which I find amazing that he's a monster who knows how to cut the power to the house. <laughs> I mean, maybe his dad, maybe his father was an electrician. He's eight years old. I'm just, I'm just saying the that that whole unmasking really ruined it for me. I think it would have been better if they didn't unmask him. And I think it, it just, I don't know, because not only did he look like a monster, he looked like a monster that <laughs> that's been a monster his entire life. Like you know, like he was he was born a monster. You know, like, I just, I, I, he should not be able to do thinking things. Yeah, he kind of reminded me of like a character that'd be like in He Man. So, no, I know what you mean, like, because even if he was like underwater, dead for so long, so he shouldn't like look like that. No, but, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm okay with the way he looks, but just keep it hidden or maybe show half his face or something. Like, I, yeah. I just, it was, it was too much of a, it was like a monster movie. It became a monster movie. Yeah. No, you're right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so then we get Nick and Tina. They find Michael's dead body in the woods. And then right back, we have to cut to Eddie and Robin, who are done boning. And this is where we get, like, the little bit of uh, follow the 80s rules, the horror rules. So, and it, 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 it's so comical the way it happens. It's such an uh, oop, oopsie just to purposely show her yeah, chest. Yeah, she has it in front of her. Yeah. And then she, like, holds out the shirt to look at it, to show it. And yeah. And she puts it on. But, but uh, how about David when he's like, Babe, I'm hungry. And he's like, don't worry. I'm Hunter. I'm the Hunter Gatherer. He's such a weirdo. Such a weirdo. But this is a rare, and I, I would say, like, in the Jason kills throughout the whole franchise, he rarely uses a knife. And he uses, a, a like, a butcher knife. Like, he uses a normal, like, kitchen knife that, like, Michael Myers has used. And, uh, yeah. And you know what's funny? There was, the, the campers had a machete. So I thought like that would be because that's his obviously go to, and I thought that's it. where he, you know, they're obviously showing you machete, so that you know he's going to grab it right away, and he doesn't even use it. No, no, not at all. Interesting. He was like, you know what, this one I'm going to try something new. <laughs> my he does. therapist, my therapist, Doctor <laughs> Cruz, told me to try, try something. The machete is no, is no good for him. You know, it just gives him <laughs> anger. <laughs> yeah. Harness something else. <laughs> So yeah, so then yeah, he kills him with a kitchen knife. And then at the very same time, we cut to Tina. She so she wants to find her dad's gun. She finds it. And then at the same time, finds all the old newspaper articles about Jason. And then it's like, oh, Jason Voorhees. They almost say it like they sort of know it, but they definitely so, not. But she freaks out. I know, I know. And the whole house shakes. Yeah, it's so weird. It's I don't know. And the gun is loaded. Like no, I don't think anyone keeps a loaded gun in the house. From seven years ago. From seven years ago. Like, well, no, like well, the, that's like not going to change. 
That's no, like no, a- I know that, but I'm saying like nobody, somebody's been in that house. We know that it's clean. It's not like the mom would be like, you know what? I have a young daughter, which well, I don't know a- if she's ever been to that. House. That's the thing. So, she, so the father had a loaded gun there while she. I mean, she, while Me she alive, she's eight years old. So you're gonna yeah. keep a loaded. So you know what? That's bad parenting. He deserves to die. <laughs> he deserves to die. I didn't want to say it, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get Eddie. Eddie's like so, like, feeling sorry for himself. He starts opening Michael's presents. <laughs> and then one is a per- penis enlarger. It almost it almost looked like a Christmas. I thought he was opening up Christmas gifts. That's what it looked like. They the kind of looked like that. It did. <laughs> yeah. But this was the only kill that I can remember with the machete. So I guess he carried it around. Because he killed – this is another quick kill that they didn't show much. All you saw was Eddie sitting there, and then he looked it over his shoulder, him. and then he sliced him with the neck with, like, a machete. But that was, like, another quick. Where do you think he kept it? <laughs> by, by the front door, like, uh, in the <laughs> umbrella holder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> umbrella, umbrella, machete. I mean, if he's walking around with a machete, why is he just not using that the entire time? Switching it up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And then Robin's death. So Robin's death scene. So hers was actually already filmed, like, when they did the movie. Like, they filmed it. And then hers was, like, a cut to the stomach. And it was, like, her stomach got split open. But when they watched it back, it didn't look good. So then they actually had to reshoot it to this one. And they filmed this one at Tommy... Tommy's house from part four. Oh, really? That's where they filmed the scene. So, okay. But which is the same house that they, oh, not the same house that they get to, when uh, the, one of the twins get tossed. That's from a different house, but no, the, the tossing that okay. her get thrown out of the window. Okay. So this part looks so ridiculous in the movie because she gets thrown backwards. You mean he, right? He, well, <laughs> He, the stunt man with yes. big calves, <laughs> thrown, and looking at the ground, but gets yeah. thrown out backwards. But when you see it from the outside view, sh- the person's jumping yes. like down, and and you can, it's almost it's like it's almost like I'm gonna get you, sucker. When you see the the mom yeah. doing the flips, and then you see the guy with the mustache, <laughs> it looks so ridiculous, like it was so bad. No, it was unbelievable. <laughs> it was so unreal. And she even said that when she watched. She's like, why would they have a guy that has like, dark hair and like the wig wasn't the same? But and... it's the way they jumped out of the window was not the way she got thrown out of the window. So it looks so dumb. Ugh. How do they not match that? Like the stuff that could have jumped off that backwards. Easily jumped backwards. I mean, you know, no, they literally jumped through the window. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then this is when Jason... Jason uh, tossed her out the window, and I, oh, I, it was like a choke slam. It was like a Undertaker choke slam, and then from there, this is where kind of all hell breaks loose because this is where we find Nick goes back to the house looking for everyone and doesn't hear anyone, and then he discovers Eddie's body under the table. Yeah, yeah, and then this is where kind of like it all goes insane, like because this is where we get uh. We had Jason with that insane weapon choice of like that weed whacker that has a saw blade on it. Yeah, I mean, I I have a weed whacker. I don't think I've ever seen a weed whacker th- like that. Dude, like, that would be the only like thing that would be for is like cutting branches, chop, maybe yeah, cutting branches, but like never a saw blade that big. No, no, not even close. I don't even know if it's. I don't think it's a real tool. You know, I think they just. That's made not it for true legal. No, and, and, and listen, the, the two things he uses in this, and he has a hockey puck, I mean, a hockey stick at, at one point that's on fire. What, you mean the hockey stick that has the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it, like, what was that tool? Like, <laughs> so I think they had, like, they made a few things just to make it, you know, just another another kill with another weapon. Was this, like, home improvement with this Tim Allen? <laughs> it it could have been. <laughs> Wait, that's your Tim <laughs> Allen? <laughs> Is that, that didn't sound I guess that sounded like an ape, right? It did sound like an ape. Oh, 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 oh. I don't, what is that? Wow, I can't nail that. Gosh. Come on, Tim Allen. St- stick to voice acting. You know, voice voices. Don't, don't, not sound Oh, nice. thank you. Yeah. I appreciate well, that. Well, it's not saying a lot. <laughs> uh, your sound effects are a half, and your voices are a one. Oh, at least it's not a half. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You're right. Half better. <laughs> So uh, 
So, dude, this is where we get, like, dude, Cruz, where we thought he was already bad, when he <laughs> uses Tina's mom as a, shield? As a human <laughs> shield. I mean, it could have been worse. I thought he was going to throw her at, you know, push her at towards Jason. So I was like, oh, he's going to, you know, like, but I mean, like, I don't know what's worse, using as a shield or pushing her towards Jason so he has time to get away. <laughs> Oh my god! He yeah. Jason quickly sticks her. She's dead. He runs away, and then he even gets to the point in which I don't know why anyone does. They're like stops. Oh, I lost him. I I. It made no sense. Like he yeah. wasn't running that long. So like you know like again, I don't care who you are, how out of, how out of shape you are. If you're in a situation like that, your adrenaline's gonna pick in. You're gonna run until you can't, and you literally can't run anymore. He literally yeah. ran for like thirty seconds. He's like ah. Oh. He's gone, <laughs> <laughs> and then he trips, and then he and then he's there, and then his death was like serious too. Like they had a super close up of the blade going into his stomach, got cut. So you only get like do, do, like yeah. it's like a little cut, and then why, why it's over. did they cut all these kills? What was oh it? the MPAA? That's why. Yeah, but they showed him in other movies. Well, remember who goes to see these movies? The age wise, high school. Okay. So they so they have to get it to PG thirteen. Yeah, but aren't the other movies are? Or no, they're, they, they're all so so they just wanted so this one's PG thirteen. I think they're all PG thirteen. Really? I'm no pretty way. sure because it. No way they ha- they have to be R. Not back then. Remember, we saw boobs in Clash of the Titans PG movies. <laughs> right. I always go back to Clash of the Titans. That was my like first PG boob movie. <laughs> um, the rating should be like right. Oh no, it is a rated R. Has sorry. to be. So has to be with it with the deaths. Has to be, which is crazy. Think about the movies that are rated R now and oh, the gore, like Terrifier two that just came out. Right, like well, they cut the crap out of this movie. That's what I mean. Like, and they didn't do it with the other movies. So wh- I wonder why for this movie in particular they really didn't show the deaths. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get they it. They did that for like Chester Chainsaw Massacre three, like they, because that's what you sort of look for. You look for the amazing uh, special effects. I like, wonder like, if there's oh a God. story on that and why they had to cut it out. <sighs> well, because because didn't they kind of do that with Hellraiser? One of the Hellraisers, Cause they they. Well, they did it in some of the other Friday the Thirteenth. There's a lot of c- scenes that we watch as a viewer and we're like, oh man, that's so cool. Because I like sometimes when they when we don't see Jason do it, not all the time, but one or. Every so often when you see him swing the machete yeah. and the blood splatter on the right. wall or on the window. I think that's cool. Sometimes but it's still later. showing it, but it's still showing something, you know, like, and I think that's, Oh yeah. So, well, maybe they didn't plan for that because they didn't think that it would get cut and then everything got cut. Or maybe they did plan for it because they didn't think anyone's going to watch the movie. Oh no. <laughs> These movies, no matter what, it's so funny. Like even this one, they're like, had a poor showing at the box office. It's like still made like $13 million. All these movies were made with it, like between one million and two million budget, and always made in the teens, which is crazy to me that they're like, yeah, after you know, even hell like didn't do bad, and they're like, yeah, we're gonna hold off for a while. It's like, why? You know what? You're making on everything. Horror fans, they're they're like the I think it's like it's like almost like country fans, like country music fans, like they're like they're so um, loyal to their music. And the same thing with horror fans. I think they're so loyal to horror movies that regardless of how, you know, whatever reviews that the movie gets, they're going to go see it anyway. Man, dude, every country horror listener that we have is like beaming right now. Glowing. I, I, yeah, of course they are. That's, but they're, 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 I would say they're the biggest fans. Like, of like, I think country fans are the biggest fans in music. Like, they're really, you know, that's why American Idol, you always have a country person winning. Who likes country? That was I was going to ask you, do you, have any, just, do you have any? Yeah, we just lost it. They just turned it off. You don't have any country people you like? Like Garth Brooks? No, not at all. I, the only one I, I, I like is Chris, Kenny Sta- Rogers? Chris Stapleton. He's like he's like Southern okay. Rock. He's like Southern Rock, though. So it's not really country. Okay. I like yeah. The Gambler. I listen to Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Like, yeah, Kenny, yeah. Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton, and Willie Nelson. Okay. And, uh, you should do one of those Kenny Rogers movies. He, he was in, those, he was in movies. He does the gambler movies, and there's like four sequels. And he's in all of them. Yeah, he's the gambler. Oh my goodness! All right, then, but then we, uh, they make a mental note of that. Okay. So then we get uh, so yeah, so this is where we uh, this is where it's crazy 
because we obviously Cruz just dies. Yep. And it's funny in those fan made sequels, he somehow survives. Like he's not dead. Is he's in like one of the uh fan made sequels, like Wait, with Lar Park. He was actually in it? Yeah, he they say he survived because you because they cut all no, no, the no, death, but I mean, really? but, but he meet but he K- Kaiser was actually in a fan made movie. Oh yeah, well they had a budget and stuff. I was yeah. gonna say they had to pay him because you know he won't talk to us. <sighs> I I think that's his people. I uh, I would love. I know babies. we gotta try. We, we gotta try again. Yeah, we gotta right. do that. All right. So then we get so we get the moment that like. Because Jason never had, like, a foe that he had a fear in any of these movies. So as silly as it is, like... No, tell fire. Like, fire, fire. He has a fear. He has a fear of fire. No, no, he has a fear of fire. I'm talking about he never had, like, a foe, I mean. Oh, that he was to, afraid like, of. To, yeah. So when they do that stare down, and he's standing in that puddle, dude, and she uses her powers, which, dude, when you see the branches come off the tree and grab him, pull him into the mud, and then you're like... Holy shit, that's badass. And then she takes down the power lines, and then that electrocutes him. You're like, oh, my God. Like, this is going to be a lot of cool effects. Now, if I'm Tina, and now I have control of my power, you know what I would do? I would just rip his arms off. Couldn't she do that? She could probably do that. And this is right after, just to not to cut you off, this was just before this is when she finds all the bodies. Right, she finds all the bodies in the woods, and then that's why that's what angers her. Correct. to be able to use all of her. Power so while he's tied her. down, why not like just rip his, you know, use that power and rip rip his arms off? No, she does you whatever, every, every, everything, and just yeah. I want to see him come back from that. He's come back from everything else. Let's see him come back from having no arms and legs. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> he's just like wiggling. It would be like a Monty Python. Right <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So, but she does what every movie does. She thinks he's dead and then walks away. Like, finish the job. Well, the one in the house is the worst. So when they get back to the house and then you get Kane jumping through the window, which I think is so. It is cool. But. Jesus. How deep is that basement? (laughs) Oh, no, that's what I was going to say. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, no, the fact that it wasn't. Well, it was in the basement when after he went down, after she choked him and he saw the mask. But when they're going up the stairs. And she sends the light and knocks him out, and he falls through, and then he just goes in a door. Oh, wait. So a light bulb hit him in the head, and that's what, like, I I would think Jason's such a a massive beast that it would just break on his head. I don't think it would knock him over. Like, I don't think a a light bulb could knock you over. Well, not even that. that, that, I agree with that. But the fact that he could be so crafty, cunning, he could do so much, but he can't duck. He, he, could jump, boy, he, could, he could jump through a window like a yeah. ninja, but he can't, he can't move fast enough when a light bulb's swinging at you. And yeah, I mean, <sighs> and is that how basements are? Like the the stairs were going up upstairs. So it wasn't even like 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 basement stairs. It was upstairs, and somehow it's so hollow that it goes right down to the basement. No, he doesn't fall in the basement yet. He falls into the closet door because there's a closet under the stairs, and he busts through that. Oh, and then so that's, that's when Tina. Okay grabs the uh the a wire from the light and chokes okay. him and splits his mask and then from there she opens the floor well that, well and then he falls through the floor like so twice, that's does any fall through the floor like floor twice or well he falls through the stairs then he falls okay, through okay. the floor yeah. it just seems like it's like a deep hole when he falls it's like ridiculous oh yeah no and somehow he's able to get right back up like is he Yeah, jumping? she's looking down at him. Yeah, and then this whole time Nick gets knocked out. He gets knocked out here, and then he gets knocked out on the dock. He gets knocked out pretty good. He's useless. Like, he really is. At this point, he's like completely useless. But again, yeah, I think he, he went at him for like a second. That was yeah, really Yeah, it. no, he tried you thought like he might have been like, you know, he was kind of like a tough guy the whole movie, and now he really didn't do much. <laughs> and then in the basement you get her firing nails at him, spraying him a gasoline, but dude, the burns. And one of the editors in the behind the scenes, he was like, because Kane had a bad burn accident, like in the late seventies. So he's like, for this guy to do this yeah. burn and for this long, like, God. But wouldn't his clothes like just basically burn off? You would think so. You think, or okay. maybe because he's still so wet. <laughs> so you think he was able to protect some of the clothing he has? Some of the clothing hung on. I mean, not that I want to see Jason naked. I'm just saying, you know, oh. it's you know he. Well, he's a monster, so I, I'm assuming he has nothing going on anyway. But I'm just saying, like, it, it, it just like if he had his mask on, I guarantee the mask wouldn't be burnt. 
<laughs> yeah, that <just, laughs> would be perfect. He would. <laughs> I mean, he he's walking through this house when they show you in his house, you know, earlier when he was in the kitchen. Now, he was in the water for how long? He's running in the woods. No mud on him. No dirt. Nothing. Nothing. Like, he's completely clean when he's just – anytime he walks around. <laughs> like, no seaweed coming off him. Like, he's he was buried in the water for how long? He doesn't have algae or anything? Like, seaweed? No. Of- <laughs> or no one, like, bumped into him. Like, <laughs> people, I'm sure, use that water and fish oh. or something. Okay. So, Nobody that, that reminds him? me. Okay. So, he's in the water for how long? If people can't see him or hear him in the woods, because, even though it's completely open, you're going to smell him. He's going to smell like fishy water because he's been there for 10 – he's been there for eight years. <laughs> hey, you, I smell rotting flesh. <laughs> and you, you look in, you're like, oh, it's Jason Boyer. I see him right there. He's okay. just waiting. Okay. <laughs> so then we get uh, – so the house explosion. Cool story about that. So they actually blew a house up. Why did, scene. It, why did it blow up? Oh, because uh, <laughs> this house All she is so did was remote, pour so gasoline sh- everywhere. No, no, the house is so remote; it should have been oil, but maybe it was propane gas, so they okay. were using that. Because I'm right. sure it wasn't natural gas. Because it was but a massive with- explosion. Oh, dude! <laughs> so they filled this house with so much dynamite. They got so much dynamite for it. They set up all the. If you look at the shot, it's kind of funny because they're like, "This would be like the big moment of the movie. This is really the last time we could." to use all this and it blew up within like 10 seconds so footage wise they didn't get too much and cameras got burnt lenses got Uh, messed up cameras broke so it wasn't like super worth it can you imagine if like one of the like the stage hands by accident is like walking in the background as it's like blowing up and they they just basically just because they only have one take on it like they're they're stuck like oh you just see Morgan? Yeah. I thought you said they left him in the house. So no. like, hey, did no. anybody tell Frank we're gonna start in five minutes? No, that would that would I mean that's sad. But I'm just saying like the fact that they have one shot to do this and you have the one guy like in the middle just like not even paying attention and like, taking a know, leak. Take, <laughs> picking Pants his nose or something or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, stuck in the in the house. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah. So then we get, oh, we think it's over. Tina and uh, Nick are on the dock. Jason comes out of nowhere to not grab Tina. And then Nick shoots Jason. And then within seconds, he's knocked out again. <laughs> he, has, he has head problems. I said he's he not. He concussions in high school. Yeah. He's he not... was knocked out. And we saw him laying face down on whatever boat was. There was a boat there. I don't know whose boat that was. Well, it is a dock. Yeah, somebody's. It is a dock. Why wouldn't there be a boat there? Well, you would think a do- like for uh, a little dock. She like was. That, she like was on a boat. No, over. she was on a boat when she, in the in the beginning of the movie. That's their boat. Oh, you think they kept the dock that she? They kept the boat that they murdered. Why not? I hope they sold that. They, they left the dock there the, the way it is. Why would they get rid of the boat? <laughs> Man, that's a great boat. Why are you trying to get rid of it? Uh, no reason. Well, he didn't There's die. No, like, wait, story. Wait. He didn't die in the boat. Oh, okay. It had nothing to do with the boat. Oh, so, so they should get rid of Tina because Tina, Tina was directly involved with the father. I would have sold the house. 100%. Oh, that, that's a different story. I the mean, memories of like of a course. abusive alcoholic husband of course. with a loaded gun. And, and, and again, wouldn't you fix the dock? Like that, to me, that's a bigger reminder. Like, let, this is where it happened. Like, at least, like, if yeah. you fix the dock or get rid of the dock, you don't see it anymore. You don't have a memory of that. But no, let's, think about it. let's leave it where exactly what killed him. The dock. Yeah. Okay. But speaking of the okay. alcoholic father, okay, he saves the dead. Okay. So he's dead for seven years, eight years in the water. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They didn't retrieve the body and have a funeral? Okay. Well, besides that, yes, they didn't retrieve the body. He looks like perfectly normal as if he was just going underwater for a little bit. This okay, eight, so this is so eight years later. You're right. So they they shot it with like prosthetics and made him look like a zombie almost. And then there was this one girl who worked on a lot of the Paramount projects for one of the main guys, uh, Frank Mancuso, who she worked on mostly like drama and comedies. So she had tasked with this and her and Beekler like butted heads so much and so much. So there was like even, I'm trying to think what it was. Oh, it was taking off Jason's mask. 
he said he wasn't going to do it and then did it anyway. He's like, screw it. I don't oh, care. man. Same thing with this. But he basically was like, let me take off his mask and then I won't look, make the dad look like a zombie. But that, so but, that was like, but that's stupid. Different. It, 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 Cause again, it looks so silly. I get it. She's able to raise Jason, but the dad looks completely normal. Like completely like there wasn't, he, like I said, he looked like he just went under underwater, like picking some rocks underwater and came back yeah. up. Like it just, yeah. that was so dumb. It was really dumb. And why do you have chains around his hands? He did. Yeah, because he like grabs Jason with it looks oh. like shackles. Well, it's probably the chain that Jason had when he was already buried. Because Jason didn't oh. have... Well, but but oh. but Jason was walking around with chains around his neck. Well, he ripped it off. Like oh. when he came out of the water, then he ripped it off. So he was able to take the because it was on a rock. So he those chains he was able to pull it out of the rock. Yeah. Oh. Like the sword and the stone. He so, did that. Okay, so <laughs> clearly then the father's alive. Did she like? Did they try to like get him out of there and say, "Oh, maybe he's alive," or they just say, "All right, he he pulled Jason under." Did they go back under and try to get the father out at that point? Do you think they're living happily ever after right now? But they, but they, like, there was none of that. Like she, like it wasn't like, "Dad, you're alive." Like it was nothing. Yeah. It was basically, "All right, he 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 came out of the water, looks normal, pulls Jason under." Maybe he's alive. Maybe he's not. But you're not gonna check. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And, and they're taken away in an ambulance. Did they ever put two people in one ambulance together like that? Oh, and the <laughs> how old they were. I, the ambulances and stuff were like really old. I was in a and <laughs> one of them. So remember, like I, I know they never mentioned the name of the town, but they actually had a town name. Oh, really? On one of it, I don't know if it said like Holloway or it something. Looked, it I, looked like such an old timey ambulance. Oh yeah, and, and I think there was a fire truck there too, or something that looked like an old timey yes. fire. It was like Death Wish Three. It, Death Wish uh, Three. They used the old British fire truck from the fifties. Uh, yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, oh, he's Stockton. Yep, it was, it was the town was Stockton. Whatever. So somewhere Stockton, Alabama, maybe let, or Arkansas. Let them borrow a fire, an old timey fire truck. That's day. funny. But, uh, and then the firefighter found the mask that was split in half. Completely a fine. Keepsake. So it, that mask, oh, you know what I said before, the mask would be fine. It was in the house that had a massive explosion, and somehow the mask looked brand new, except it was split in half. Now, if you're the manufacturer of those masks, that's the ad, right? <laughs> it's going to last for for life, and we Ho- mean it for hockey. That 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 would have started everything. But the, the, I use the Jason mask, and it's like Martin Brodeur. Or like, like, wouldn't it have been smart to like at least show it melted a little bit, just something, like just just show something. nothing. It, was, it looked brand new, flawless. It, it like really this. was. It was like psh. it was explosion. Well, everything that one's yellow. That's uh, Jason takes Manhattan. It's more yellow in that one. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah. So that's uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven: A New Blood. Got to ask my uh, after we discuss it. Would you recommend somebody to watch this? You 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 have to because it's part of the the series. Um, yeah. But I I again I don't think it's as I think it's in the bottom of the list of all of them. Um, not the bottom, but it's it's top three maybe in the bottom. I think. Oh. Um, I like a lot of the other ones better, but you have to. If you're if you're a Jason fan, you're a Friday Thirteenth fan. It's part of the you know you got to keep watching them all. So yeah, absolutely. All right. No, I, I always say Zombie Jason. Like, I love the other ones. I, I like two, three, four, five. Like, when we talked about it, I really had, like, a different understanding than maybe act after uh, interviewing the main girl. But, uh, no, six Zombie Jason are, like, the three that I love to watch. I don't know what it is. There's something about it. But, no, you got to watch all of them. You do. But, like I said, I think, honestly, as much as, like, you're excited to see Jason without the mask. And I was too. Like, you know, you always, you know, you want to see what he looks like. It's almost like, you know, like knowing what you get for, for your birthday gift before you open it. And then you're disappointed when you open it. Right. You know, and because you already know yeah. what it is. Like, and to me, it's like, now I see what he is underneath that mask. It kind of ruins it because he's so not a human at all. Like I'd rather see zombie, yeah. like look like a human zombie than see a monster. And he looks like a monster, not a zombie. And I think that 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 ruined it for me. Yeah, he, well, he looks better than he looks like an eight when they take the mask off because he has like those weird teeth yeah. and he looks like a <laughs> mummified. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, so in the next sequel that we're covering, it's uh, it's the holiday season, so uh, we're gonna be covering Puppet Master Ten, Axis Rising. The fact that if if you're covering a seventh installment, 
there's like very rare chances that the next one is going to be higher, but we did it. So it's Puppet Master 10, Axis Rising. It's free on YouTube. Uh, for it, I interviewed Martin Harris. He had a small role in this as a Nazi so- soldier. But, man, his story was one that uh, I didn't expect. Like, I'm, I'm, like, looking at his IMDb. I'm like, oh, cool. He was in that really awesome, legendary, like, prison fight scene in Stranger Things. He's one of the prisoners. Cool stories about that. But, dude, he was from Poland and his journey to Hollywood along the way. He covered the NBA for Europe. So he was like coming to America to cover all star games. Had like sort of like a not, not like he knew Kobe that well, but had like conversations with Kobe. We talked NBA. He's a Hawks fan. So I really uh, gave the business being a Knicks fan. But, uh, and then the fact that he worked at this comedy store doing stand up for so many years and then like did like a sh- the Friday night show. He was the guy that ran it. He knew so many of the guys. Like Joey uh, Coco Diaz, he was like, oh, yeah, yo, he just moved to Jersey. I'm like, holy shit, dude, this guy really knows everybody. But, yeah, he was fun to talk to. So, yeah, Puppet Master 10, it will be fun. I only remember, like, the first one. Oh, you saw the first one? Oh, yeah, it was like our buddy Billy Wilson. uh, That was like a sleepover movie that they would uh, show to me and his brother. Is it like – is it like – uh, what's that movie with the so, uh, small so, uh, soldiers or you <laughs> small know? soldiers? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it's sort of. Is like that, that like okay? It's more uh, small soldiers is more CG, but no, but this I, one. But I watched the trailer and I didn't see one puppet. They were all to- they're all toys, like miniature toys. Well, they're pup they're puppets. Okay, we're not going to get in this conversation. We'll talk about again. that. Wait, we'll, wait, we'll, we'll have to. I have to say this one real quick then, because so you yeah. think. A puppet is closer to a toy than a marionette. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. I'm done. A marionette uh, has strings. A toy. You, can, you, don't, you can't even make it speak. You, so you're saying like He-Man is like a puppet. <coughs> uh, so you think He-Man's more of a puppet than Pinocchio? Well, we're gonna have to talk about that. Oh my we'll goodness! Do, that'll be that'll be like a good thirty minute chunk of us <laughs> discussing. Are these puppets ridiculous? That's a so dumb. But uh, yeah, so don't forget to review, rate, share our podcast, follow us on all social media at Sequels Only, and don't forget to check out our website, SequelsOnly.com. Good night. Good night.